In this lesson, we're going to prepare our scene to get ready for the dynamics that we're going to create. And the first consideration we need to make is the fact that any time that the dynamic node starts on a mesh network, it's going to stop any animation that's a simulation that's happening. Meaning, if you notice the reference we're looking at, we have, if you remember, this has spring on it. Remember when we did this? As on this offset node. So this is all springing back into place and that has to finish before we begin the dynamic simulation. So you can see here that the bricks don't start falling until after that's completed. So we wanna make sure the timing works with that in what we currently have. We may need to adjust the timing of the animation so that the bricks fall down when we want them to start. So the other thing we need to take into account is how we're going to trigger the dynamic simulation to begin. So we need to create another motion path animation that will drive the dynamic simulation because we can't use these spheres to do it because that timing is different, right? You can see that these are doing their own thing and the bricks start falling over here. So we can't really use this thing to drive a simulation to start over here it's because it's over there. It just physically cannot because it's too far away. So we need to create another um, motion path with an object that can initiate and trigger the dynamic simulation to start. So let's get started with that. So in Maya, let's take a look and just play back what we have to see if the timing of everything, yeah, that pretty much works with what the reference we have. So the spring of this top left is kind of done. So now we can get ready for the dynamic simulation to start around frame 150. Let's see if I can stop right at 150. It looks like the spring is pretty much done. So let's say we're gonna start the animation, the dynamic simulation on 150. That means we need the trigger thing to hit the first piece of geometry here. Uh, and so how we're going to do that is to create a motion path and add a new object to it and drive the simulation with that collision with that object. So what we need to do is duplicate. We already have these curves created, so we can just use those. So let's duplicate these two curves and we'll call them dynamics so we can differentiate between the other ones. And we want to create a cone. And I'm choosing a cone because I want a wedge shape to drive this so that we kind of, we're going to use this as another fall off object. And what I want to have happen is this kind of wedge action because I don't want it to happen in a straight line. So I want it to kind of go out from the center here so it'll be a little more controlled in that sense. So let's adjust the aspects of this cone to work with how we want to affect this. So let's start up here, just to kind of get an idea of where it's gonna get positioned eventually. Go to polycone and choose a cone radius, of uh, maybe something a little wider, and we need to stretch it out. So let's do a height of six. And then for this to go and follow the motion path, we need to add geometry here. So we need to add more subdivisions to the height. So let's do something like 20. So now when we do the motion path flow motion, it'll actually be able to distort and deform rather this cone. So let's grab these two curves first and isolate select them so we can kind of see them by themselves. And what we wanna do is we can just delete these first two ones actually, th these first few, and we need to drag this start where, where the uh, cone is gonna start from. We need to drag it way out here because if we look at the size of the cone and it's set, you know, centered up on this, we don't want it to, to be in a starting position that would already be intersecting that, right? We want it to start further away from it so it doesn't intersect at all with the piece of geometry. And again, sorry, I, was, I live in Santa Monica, California, and there's, it's like four blocks away from the Santa Monica Pier, and there, I don't know if you can hear that helicopter and sirens, and anyway, there's always stuff happening around here. So now that we have this curve, let's, let's go back to the curves 
and adjust them properly. Normally when I'm recording these classes, I try to do it at like one in the morning when things aren't super active, but um, that's not super healthy for me <laughs> to stay up that late. And uh, I already have other things I'm doing. Anyway, I don't want to get into all that, but um, it, it's a lot. So I apologize for the, the background noise. If you can hear that, I honestly can't tell until after I'm done recording. So I appreciate your understanding for all of that. So what I want to do is drag these all out so that there's no situation here where it's going to try to, um, you know, get distorted basically. And I want the radius of this thing. If you think about what we're doing, I want the radius of this thing so big that the very last end piece definitely, you know, comes in contact with what we're seeing with the silhouette here. So that makes sense as far as the size is concerned. So let's uh, move forward and attach this to the, this path. So I'll select the cone and then select this. Actually, I'm gonna duplicate this cone out um, because we're gonna need another one down here before I attach it. So let's select the cone, select the motion path and go to constrain motion paths, attach to motion path. Now, you can see this isn't doing what we want it to do necessarily. Let's go into the motion path and let's open up the graph editor so we can see what it's doing. And we're gonna do a similar thing that we did before, right? We, we've already kind of done this, but we're gonna add one new thing to it that I wanna make sure you see. Let's just make sure this is going in the right direction. And so it is starting, it, the, the curve doesn't need to get reversed because it is going in the right direction. We need to change the timing of it. So we want it to, we also need to change how it's oriented. So let's go back into the Ashreed editor here and go into motion path and choose the motion path to be the Y axis. Uh, let's see, Y axis front and Z. So yeah, it depends on the, the shape of your object, but this is the front axis and this is the up axis. So now it's pointed in the way that we want it to go. And now we just need to figure out the timing so that on frame 150, it is intersecting with the, um, it's intersecting with the front of the logo. So basically I've, I have my keyframe. What I'm doing is I'm on frame 150. And then even though I'm not, I'm, you know, adjusting a keyframe that's not on frame 150, that doesn't matter because it's, Wherever this line, this curve intersects with where I am in time, that's what we're watching and that's all we really care about. So we just need to move this around in time and value until it kind of hits that on frame 150. So we have the timing set up properly, but now when we kind of play this through, we can see this doesn't really do the wedge shape thing we want it to do because it's doing this kind of rotation here. We want this point to get stuck on the curve. And the way around that is to add something from the constraint menu here. The same area we attach to the motion path, but let's choose flow path object. Let's open up the options here and that is fine. Let's hit flow. And so now we see we have this lattice shape around the object. And when we play it forward, it should follow much closer to the curve that we had created. So it does do that, in fact, and it is twisting a little bit. It kind of spazzes out right here. So how we can fix this is actually by going to the motion path and say uh, the world up type should be normal. So now when we scrub through, we see it's nice and smooth and we weren't getting that twisting that was happening here. I believe it was under vector. Yeah, see now it's twisting. So under the motion path attribute, we can just change that to be normal and it should fix that little twist. And now we have this really nice trigger to go around the object. So that is gonna be very, very helpful for triggering the animation. And I will leave you to do the next one. Basically attach this to the motion path. I mean, I guess we, we could just do it super quick. Uh, constrain motion path, attach motion path. And then we need to fix the vector stuff here, go normal, and then do Y and Z, and then do uh, change the animation. So on frame 150, it is 
right at the tip there. Whoops, right at the tip there-ish. And then we need to add the flow motion. So let's go to constraint, motion paths, flow motion, boom. And we can also increase the uh, lattice shape divisions here. You know, it, it, I guess it's this one. So we can increase that and it'll get a little smoother. So we can just bump those up so it'll follow around those curves a little better. So now we have this awesome trigger for our dynamic simulation. So I'm going to see you in the next lesson where we will continue on with the dynamics and actually add it and then finesse how these interact with the dynamic simulation to trigger it to start. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.